Hi, my name is Devin McClintock and I am one of the current AACD residents studying with the one and only legendary Dr. Damo Notorantonio. So if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you are pretty interested in learning more about the AACD and or the AACD residency program. I get questions all the time, whether it's on social media or when I'm at a lecture or a conference about the program. So I decided to create this platform as a way of answering some of those questions directly back to you guys. Through a series of videos, I'll introduce you to myself, my own dental journey, my incredible mentor, Dr. Adamo, the AACD, and the residency program. I'm hoping to give you guys a behind the scenes look as to what it's like to be one of the AACD residents as well as walk you through some of my own thought process and analysis of my work posted on my Instagram page so that you guys can better analyze and critique your own work. I get this question a lot, uh, not just from my dental friends, but from my non-dental friends and family. What the heck is the AACD residency program? So a couple years ago, the AACD came up with this program as an idea to match younger doctors with an interest in cosmetic dentistry to establish and accomplish fellows of the Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. The ADA currently does not recognize cosmetic dentistry as its own specialty. And because of that, there is no in-depth training uh, for cosmetic dentistry. And it's a field that is so complex and multifactorial, it is not something that you can learn overnight or in a three-day seminar, or a week-long seminar, or even six months. So the AACD came up with this concept of the residency program to provide those younger doctors with an in-depth, comprehensive training in cosmetic dentistry. The program is two years and you are working one-on-one -on -one with your preceptor in his or her private practice. There is only one resident per preceptor, so it's one-to-one. -one. So unlike when you are an associate and you get paid by production or collection, uh, you get paid via stipend, like you're in a GPR AG. As for procedures, you can do whatever procedures you feel comfortable with. You do have a list of requirements that are fairly extensive. If you think about the requirements for AACD accreditation, the five cases, it's kind of multiplied by five where you almost have to do five of each types of those cases. In addition, you are required to do certain gingival surgeries, uh, crown lengthening, uh, grafting, uh, as well as ortho if you have interest or access to completing ortho. So this question comes from Dr. Julie Driscoll, who is a future AACD resident herself. I will say, no question, my favorite part so far has been documenting my process, this process. I am somebody who gets very hard on themselves and critiques their work almost too much, but it's so nice to be able to go back and look at some of my early work and photos and physically see the progress and I think that's key is I'm only six months in and I still have a long way to go but being able to physically see and track my improvements over the last six months has been second to none and you'll love it too. Hi everyone um, good morning do we want comments on or off kiddos? Um, I think comments on might be good because I think well, we're going to have a lot of questions about this. So um, let's keep them on. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We couldn't get the Facebook to stream. So we're going to have this recorded and then we'll post it um, to our Facebook later on. But, um, but let's do some introductions here. Yeah. So um, 
I'm a Damo. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're excited. Amanda and I are excited today. And, you know, as we do these week by week, we try to make them a little different. Sometimes it's Amanda and I. We had the fortune of speaking with Chris Coachman and John Coyce uh, and Rolando. We've had some fun and we thought, you know, what can we do a little different? Um, and I think uh, being that we're at two different parts in the journey so far, um, I think this is going to be great because there's a lot of new questions, some questions that can be filled in. And, and I've had Devin as my resident for about nine months now, even though it feels like 15 oh, years in a positive way. What was that? Are you still Stella Squash? That's so awesome. Um, <laughs> so I would like to introduce, and I'm sure some of my followers or most of my followers see me comment and repost your stuff. Um, my AAS, AACD resident, Devin McClintock. Hi. <laughs> so Devin, tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey, and how you ended up in my damn office. Oh, well, I graduated from Buffalo Dental School in 2016 and went in to do two years of GPR residency. After my first year of GPR, I just didn't feel like I got enough uh, exposure and um, experience. So I decided to do a second year in a clinic where I could focus on more big rehabilitation cases. I dabbled with the idea of going into PROS. I was always interested in cosmetics. And I ultimately went to my first AACD meeting on a whim when I was a GPR because uh, our we had a committee of interns and residents like union that gave us free money to go to CE. So my friend and I went to Vegas in 2017 and it was amazing. Uh, the meeting, Vegas was full too, but uh, we went and it was awesome. And I actually went to a lecture by Courtney Levine the last day and I wrote down her email because I just loved her work, loved everything she did and I messaged her afterwards when I was in my second year of GPR and she invited me up to Boston. I went to look at her practice and I shadowed her for the day and she was like, you know, you're, you're welcome anytime but it's kind of a long drive. It's like three, four hours. She's like, I know people in New York because I was in New York still at the time. And so she gave me actually Sal Letardo and Adamo's email. And so I emailed both of them. Did you know um, anything about Adamo at the time? Never heard of I them? Or? Never heard of them. I wasn't even on Instagram. I was very late to everything on yeah. social media. And so I had emailed him and then we talked on the phone. And I remember freaking out because I called him because he told me to call him at like nine o'clock and I called and he didn't answer. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and he called me like, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, I went for a run or something. And so we talked for like an hour on the phone. He's like, come anytime. So I came on a Tuesday. I think I got there at like nine and stayed till like eight. And then he had a webinar he was doing that night. And he was like, if you want to stay, you can stay. So I stayed for another hour. I think I was there for a full 12 plus hours. And then at the end, he was like, oh, you can come back anytime. And I'm like, are you sure? Because you really shouldn't make offers because I'm the type of person <laughs> who will take you up on that offer. Because in my second year of GPR, I worked on Saturdays. So I had Tuesdays off so I could go and shadow people. And so I did. I pretty much went any Tuesday that I was in town and I could sp spare, I would go to I would drive an hour and a half to his practice and just hang out shadow and just watch like what a good highly functioning practice looked like which was also really rare for me to see and also to see how he worked and then it was just yeah. true love from there that's awesome i mean i i commend you for your determination like i see it i mean there's there's people that want it but they're unwilling to put the amount of work and the dedication into it and um, I mean, Devin, I've known Devin now for, I don't know, has it been two years? A year and a half, I think. A year and a half. half. Um, and so one of the perks of being Adamo's resident is that she has gone to all of our Impress courses. Um, and she's also helped us set up, break down all those courses, prepare for the courses and all the in-between. And it's, it's been just a joy to watch your growth and your journey. Um, I, I love it. I, I'm just sad that 
you're not staying in New York. I mean, I, if you, I, I, you know, I'm happy for you. you. Have to do what you have to do, you know. But if you were still in New York, would you work for Adamo? Of course. Yeah. No question. Yeah. I mean, I'd be stupid not to hire her at this point, right? <laughs> so we we had a conversation not too long ago, and Devin looked at me and said, "All right, what the heck do I do when I'm done? Like." Do I go get a job? And I'm like, let, let's be honest. And, and this is not in an arrogant way, right? It's who are you going to work for? With the exception of one human that I know in Virginia, which is Kathy Sinclair, who I, you know, is ACD accredited. He, his practice is super high level, great guy. You can't go back to uh, a mediocre kind of practice when you've been exposed to the highest level of everything, not just the dentistry, the business, the the office quality, the, you know, you need to go there. So it's either open on your own or work for Cappy at this point. I'm sure there are other great practices in Virginia. I don't know them personally, but it, it has to be a little more of a higher end practice or she, I, or she used to message me in her first year at work in Virginia, like every week losing her mind, like I can't do this, I can't do this. My boss wants me to do this and I wanna do this and I don't believe in it. And it's hard, right? So when we get so much education, um, it's hard to go back to not utilizing. I mean, you almost feel like trapped, right? And being an AACD resident, and we'll get to the question later, but the amount of education, and Julie, I'm super excited for you because you're just taking your two feet and putting them in the water. But imagine 15 years of CE all squeezed into two little years. And that's basically what it is because it's, it's a business lesson. It's a day-to-day -day practice lesson. It's a psychology lesson with patients. I mean, I, I had De Devin had to escort one of my patients out to the parking lot, and we almost had to call the cops. Where are you going to go to CE to learn how to handle that? And how many attorney letters I had to send this lady every single week and every appointment with specific? I mean, that was a lesson in itself yeah. for me too. So. That's that's the great, unique thing about this residency. Everybody thinks cosmetic dentistry residency, and yes, you're going to learn a whole load of cosmetics, really, but you're going to also learn practice management, how to deal with your team, how to develop an office. And if you know you go on your own one day, or if you open an office with Amanda, how are you you're going to see so much little stuff that there is no CE that's going to give you that. It's a physical impossibility. Right. I don't think there's any residency or CE where you're learning in a practice. No. So, Julie, will you introduce yourself? Because it, um, some of you know, some of you don't, but Julie is my new AACD resident. She, I know, I'm so excited. Um, she will be joining me very soon, um, probably in the next few weeks. So we're kind of preparing for all the new changes. But um, Julie, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm from North Carolina. I went to college down in College of Charleston, downtown Charleston. It was great. Um, stuck around for dental school there at MUSC. Um, great experience. Um, we got a lot of exposure to digital dentistry, which was really cool. Um, and they had a they had a strong clinical. Um, the last two years were, were great. Um, and then this past year, I'm currently still in my AGD at UNC. Um, not seeing patients, but I'm. Um, we're doing a lot of online um, learning and case discussions, things like that. But um, as far as cosmetic dentistry goes, I knew since early on, like when I wanted to do dentistry in the first place, like middle school, high school, I was 100% drawn to cosmetics, um, kind of ortho sort of thing, but ultimately aesthetic dentistry. Um, so at MUSC, I kind of started up at AACD chapter didn't go very far because I was kind of started it late senior year, um, but it just, it got me in touch with the people at AACD and kind of got some interest. We did some, um, we had Dr. Menito come and do a, um, like a hands-on um, composite course one night. So I've always been interested in it. And so, yeah, so I'm doing my residency right now, general dentistry and you really don't get that exposure to cosmetic dentistry, at least at the level that y'all work at. So, um, yeah, when I when I heard about this, I, I hopped right on it. Um, 
And I, I just don't think that there's any way to truly learn, like you were saying, with CE or other residencies to truly learn um, the business side, the patient management side and everything. So I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. And I, you know, I can tell you from my own experience and I know Adamo and I have different experiences, but when I came out of school, my mentor that I met at the AACD was Dr. Tom Trinkner. He's in um, Columbia, South Carolina. I would drive two hours to his office, any chance that I had to watch him do a case. And while I was eager to make the trip whenever I could, I mean, this is like maybe once every other week, once a month, and I have no continuity about how the case was treatment plan, diagnosed, or you know, the preparation, there's so many questions. Every, I mean, every time I went, it sparked my interest even more, but I, there wasn't enough for me to go home and say, well, now I can do it too. You know, so to be able to be in someone's office, like if I, cause I almost moved to Columbia to work for him because I, if I could have sat chair side and been his assistant on these cases, how much I would have learned. I mean, I would, I would have done anything to be able to do that. And I literally almost moved, but it was a personal thing with my family. I found out I was pregnant at the time. So I just think this residency program is incredible. And not just for Julie and Devin to learn, but I think also for the preceptors, because for me, you know, I just bought another practice and in looking for somebody to work there, What's the number one question that people want to know who potentially are interviewing for the job? How much they're going to get paid? And I, I get that. I mean, I get that. We all have personal needs, but when that is such a factor in the sense of um, over the learning value, over everything else, it, it becomes, okay, well now I got to fill their schedule. With, anything doesn't matter what it is fill it now i got to get new patients in. now i get and so instead of it being like hey do you want to learn and just sit be my for this four hour procedure that we're going to do because an associate that i pay with that model they wouldn't want to do that because they're not going to get paid right so it, it, it takes all of those factors out of it and it just makes it so much better and um, and I'm sure you can attest that, Devin. I mean, even if you don't have a patient, you are always busy doing something. Oh, absolutely. I would say the one thing I tell dental students and even like my friends is the best thing I've done so far since graduate is shadow in people's offices because you learn so, so much. And the thing is, is that you're right. A lot of people don't want to do it. They just don't see the value of doing it of spending a day shadowing or assisting. And Adama will attest, I think I've moved up to maybe subpar level assistant. I was definitely horrible. And now I think with the quarantine, I've become subpar. Would you, would you say subpar? Handles for sure. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it's definitely humbling to be an assistant. Um, and then you learn so much being like right there. And the question I get all the time is how many patients do you actually see? And the reality is that I don't see as many patients, but I did two years of GPR. I did one year of private practice. I'm not concerned about building volume of patients and trying to get, you know, my hands wet with dentistry and trying to, you know, up my speed. I'm trying to sit and learn the fine details. The hand skills, they're, I mean, the drill and fill hand skills, they're there. They're, I, I can do a class two filling, no problem. But I wanna learn how to make a seamless class four blend into a tooth. And that's not something that you can learn just by doing one right after the other, after the other without kind of learning a system or watching somebody else and kind of really figuring out why. And I, Adamo calls me chatty patty because I ask questions nonstop because I want to learn. I'm like, okay, well, why are you using this? Well, how long are you etching that for? Or yeah. what are you going to use silane? Are you not going to use silane? And like, what's your thought process? And you learn so much. And the nice thing about this is that you're right. You're basically getting paid to learn. I've learned how to use the iTero and Cerex where I can, I think we timed, I think it's 
Mike and Marielle in like a minute and a half or something. Like I, I learned how, but that's the thing is like all these things people say, oh, if I had the time, I would do it. I just don't have the time. Well, now I'm being paid to have the time to learn. Yeah, and I, you know, I think to go along with that, which I think is priceless. And I think, Julie, this is a, maybe a good tip for you coming from me being that you're starting. Um, what I love about Devin, and yes, I make fun of her for being chatty patty, but she gets me out of a lot of binds with patients when I'm running behind because I just put her in the room. And I'm good. Um, but I love that she asks so much questions and she pays attention and notices because, you know, Amanda and I teach class four this way, this way, this way. And then there are times where she's like, hold on a second. What? That's complete opposite of why you're doing this. Why are you doing this that way? Because every procedure, every patient is never the same. Now, as much as we want to say there is a cookie cutter way to do a class four, there's not because it, it depends on a lot of situations, right? So she gets to see the thought process of how to be creative, how to be different. And, and you know, even when things don't go your way, like we had an implant go up in a patient's sinus one time and she turned white as a ghost and I stayed cool as a cucumber. <laughs> and but inside I was dying. Hey, we will not be doing that, don't worry. It we, was I, literally like out, all but, the blood drained from my face. Yeah, like. was like, I'm like, okay, we're gonna just take a pan now. And you saw this thing sideways and backwards. And she's like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm gonna stick my suction up the hole until I find this thing. And, but did. that's a, a lesson in itself. Like, where are you gonna go to CE where they teach you how to breathe a second? come up with a different plan. Okay, this isn't gonna work, obviously. So how do we get about it? So I think when you're working with Amanda and even the best is definitely chair side, assist as much as you can, um, but ask questions. And it's yeah. it's really cool. I think the patients respect mm -hmm. you, the doctor even more and the assistant more because they're like, wow, listen to this conversation. It's not, you know, and I usually don't say much when I work. So. Devin has to, to ask the questions for me, but um, I think it, it's impressive on all parts. So, so take advantage of that because I mean, you have a pillar of knowledge by you and she's not, she doesn't hide anything. She's gonna share every little trick and, and but a lot of it is gonna be on the women. You're not gonna realize that till you, till you see it day by day because things change. Even yeah. just like layering, like he did a composite yes, yesterday or no, two days ago uh, for an emergency chipped front tooth and I was like, okay, so enamel next or dent next? And like, I would be asking, I kind of had an idea because watching him, but then I like to confirm things and it's kind of nice because you get that repetition over and over and over again. And his assistant will quiz me too. She's like, okay, well, we're using this, uh, with this type of crown, what kind of cement are we using? Yeah. I can't think he's great with that. Then just real time, picking your brain. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool that there it's, Mentorship is so important in any any career, but to have one that has the structure where you know I'm going to be there every day, and then working different paces, it's it's really cool. I'm super excited. So you know, and we have so many questions, really great questions, because a lot of people are don't know a lot about this program. Nine out of the 10 questions I get can be answered by going on that. I also made a whole bunch of videos on my Instagram page that talk about the frequently asked questions. So I would go to the website, again, aacd.com slash residency, or go to my Instagram page. One of my earliest videos is all frequently asked questions about the residency program. Yeah. And I just want to touch on, um, I had some international dentists ask me about it. Yes, you can do it if you're an international dentist, but with the international program, you can do the residency there. But again, if you go to the website, somebody from the AACD can help you and guide you through that process. Yeah, and this is not a pathway into a, a state license in the US. Like, it's not affiliated. And a lot of people ask that, and that's a legit question because you could be a periodontist in Australia or and come here and do a residency and then practice here that that it's not going to help um it's not affiliated with anything like that so we'll see i had a great question uh, uh, that just came up um a doctor asked how do you create consistency among different preceptors and i'm going to say i mean i've spoken to a couple of the preceptors amanda you're just getting started with this but there are requirements that the residents have to finish within the two years you can't just 
call the ACD and be like, by the way, I'm a preceptor. Uh, there's a lot to it. You have to be accredited. And I, I'm not sure. I don't think you have to be fellowed, but you definitely have to be accredited. Um, uh, but there are certain guidelines for us. Uh, we have to be applied. We have to be accepted. Uh, and then there are requirements for the residents that they have to get done. They do not have to become accredited within the two years. That's all on the website, I believe, as well. Um, certain procedures, so on and so forth. But I think to answer this person's question, it's going to be a little different in everybody's office. The amount of hours we work, the type of practices we have, I think overall they'll get the basic general knowledge, but they're going to get the education dependent on their individual preceptor because we all practice different, we all do different techniques and so on and so forth. But there is a streamline, so it stays kind of consistent, but you're going to get a little different effect depending on, on who you are. Your contract is individual with the person that hires you, you know, whatever that arrangement is. Um, and I can tell you just speaking from experience with Devin, I mean, I know that she might have a certain number of days that she works that are the same as Adamo's, but I mean, I see Devin working whenever she can, when she can. I mean, if Adamo comes in on the weekend for an all day photo shoot, she'll go all day for a photo shoot. We have our, we get courses like five, six times last year. Devin came to all of them and when she came, I'm talking about the setting up, the prepping and all those things. So, you know, what you get out of it is what you put into it. And contracts are contracts. You can figure that out with whoever, you know, you pair up with. Um, but if you're just going to fulfill the number of days as per contract, then you're missing out. That's, that's my point of view. Yeah, I'm going to make you laugh with that because when we first started, Devin's like, okay, so what's my schedule? I'm like, well, you're any, any waking hour, I'm here, you're here. And if I travel on a Thursday, I'll probably make you go in Thursday morning in case of any emergency or whatever, right? So she's like, oh, what do you work? I'm like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. She's like, great. I'm like, I work 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. sometimes later. She's like, oh, so I have a couple days I can moonlight. I'm like, sure, no problem. At the end of the first week, the Wednesday night, she walked in my office with glazed eyes and looked at me. And she's like, I don't know how you do this every week. So I, can I still don't know. And I would get on the, tr the plane and travel like 40 weekends of the year after. So um, it sounds like it's not a lot, but trust me. It, it's it's a lot and if you go above and beyond and do the extras that Devin does I mean she built a damn sim lab in her basement practices on type it on teeth she waxes stuff I mean she helps us both Amanda I mean endlessly with the stuff Absolutely. with the courses so um, there's so much you can get out of it but it's what is again it's what you put into it and I'll be honest I'm not quite sure because and I'm not trying to blow up her head, but how do I have somebody fill those shoes? I mean, the amount of effort and the things that she does makes my job easy. I mean, her work ethic has basically followed after my work ethic. I mean, you know how, how hard I work and and she's taken that on and that's gonna be tough shoes for me to fill because if I get a resident that doesn't do half of what she does, I'm gonna be like, wait a second. Uh, this ain't gonna work because if you wanna roll with me, you're gonna have to keep 150 mile an hour pace and that's just the way it is. Yeah. Oh, Joe, she set the standard high, but I'm thankful for that. You know, with all the videos and the extra, yeah. that's what we're going to learn even even more. So, thanks for that. Yeah, um, you, they're they're already going to have like little internal oh yeah competition, right? That's an answer that you have to determine yourself because I know Brian Lesage is another preceptor. I mean, he had a dentist that was a resident who has been practicing dentistry for quite a long time, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it depends on where you are in your career path. I mean, maybe you've been doing dentistry a certain way for 10 years and, and you're, you want to do something different. You want to learn. I mean, like I said, CE is wonderful, but to be able to have that hands-on experience with somebody who's already successfully doing it in their practice, it's. Um, there's there's never a place that's too late right um so i think that that's important to consider yeah if i can i'm gonna add to that man i don't know if you remember but stephanie zeller asked me a really cool question uh and i kind of came across a little harsh and i'm gonna do the same now because that's just the way i am um, but she asked what advice would you give to dentists just graduating a new residence a new dentist and what about the people that are 7 to 15 years out and are starting to get 
like kind of bored and you know in a whatever place um, so I would say there is no time that's too late because if you got to that point at seven to 15 years and you're like dentistry's lame I don't love it then I think you got two options in life either crap or get off the pot and if it's you quit if you're not going to do nothing about it and it's not going to accelerate yourself and try to get better then stop doing dentistry and find something else because in the end who, who suffers the patient yeah. right because if if you're not educating yourself and you're not working hard to deliver the best you can and we all have work out there we're not proud of because it doesn't always work out like our instagram photos but you you got to have 100 percent hard at work and i say it all the time the day that I, don't, I walk into work and my frown goes upside down, I'll close the door, no one will, I'll shut my Instagram account down, no one will ever see me again in dentistry. I'm gonna open a food truck after that, by the way, just so you all know, so you can find me making barbecue, but I really believe that it, it's in the heart, and I don't care if you're 20 years out, if you're bored and you don't love it, become a resident, spark some fire, do something. Yeah. Like, yeah. go find something passionate that makes you wanna continue, and that's my two cents about it. Yeah, and there's it's an easy way to find a mentor. Like there's not many ways that are structured like this where you go online and you get matched with somebody. Um, and then real quick, so I've had some dental students ask me like when's too early to get interested and I sent them to the website, but I think that if they can find dentists in their area, which is kind of what I did with Amanda because I knew I wanted to go back to Charleston. Um, and find someone that maybe could be interested in being um, a preceptor that hasn't thought about it. So for a younger dentist, I think that that might be a nice route. Um, yeah, I mean, too early, it's preceptors, and like Devin did, you know, came once a week. You know, you don't necessarily have to do full time if you can't at that time. It, it, it's never too early to join ACD. I mean, John Calamia does a great job with the university program. The student stuff that you get for, for the price is ridiculous. It's so cheap and it's great exposure. I mean, Amanda and I could both say that the ACD accreditation of fellowship changed our life 150%. Maybe a way better dentist. Yeah. And I, you know, back to what you were saying, Adamo, the people that have been out in practice 15, 17 years and you know, I, I can tell you with my experience with one of my best friends from childhood, um, Aaron, a Domino's Aaron, and you know Aaron, Devin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we came out of school about the same time and we kind of did our own thing in dentistry. And, you know, she was okay with what she was doing with her dentistry, but if she could retire, she probably would have, right? And, she went to her first AACD and it was actually the one I didn't go to. Only one time I didn't go and it was because I think I had a baby or I don't remember what it was. Oh, no, it could have been something. No, Erin can tell me. I can't remember, but I, I had something and I missed it. Um, and I said, how was it? You know, and, and she, and this is her first one. She went on her own, didn't know anybody. And she said it was good, but she was overwhelmed in a way. Right, she didn't have anybody that showed her around, told her what courses to take, and then the following year I went with her. I definitely didn't have a baby. I, it was spring break. It was my kid's spring break, and I couldn't choose Vegas over my kid's spring break. That's what it was. You weren't in Vegas? Um, no, I wasn't. And we went together, and she came back so fired up, and she said it was a totally different experience. So. It, it showed me the power of mentorship. Like, and I'm, I'm just one person, you know, and I, yes, I'm her friend, her best friend, but we, I, I went through there with her and through that one meeting, she signed up for accreditation. Now she's passed four out of five cases in a year. I mean, she's on fire. She's, you know, so, and that's somebody that's been in practice 15 years and she achieved all this in like two years. Well, almost all done with Koi's too already, right? Yeah, she's almost done with Koi's. So, it doesn't matter where you are on your journey. I mean, you've, you've got to have that fire and sometimes that fire can't, can't be, you know, in there. Sometimes you need the help of a mentor, a friend or a colleague to help you discover that. So that's my little two cents about that. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent.
there is a huge difference between the residency program and accreditation itself. So accreditation itself is a very specific journey with a specific goal and very specific steps. And I'll very briefly explain them. I'm actually going to make a video for the ACD. So in the next week or so, we'll post it up. Um, but basically, it's a written exam. Uh, once you take a written exam, you can take it at the annual meeting or a testing center. Then your clock starts. You have five years to complete five specific case types with photography protocol and case type protocol. And if you pass the five, then you have an oral exam uh, where you do like case presentation and, and talk about your cases and so on and so forth. And after that, you become accredited. So it's a very specific focus on cosmetics. Now, the mentorship you get there, I mean, my mentor, Brad Olson, I'll never forget the first case I sent them an email. I thought I nailed eight and nine on this case and I got an email back that was like this long and he like destroyed you. me and I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna pass accreditation. But at the bottom he wrote, P.S. 97% of the dentists in this country would kill to do work like that. Keep it up, you're gonna be fine. And I didn't, I didn't understand half the stuff he said at first. He was talking about gingival height discrepancies and two sides and a different value. And I was like, wait, what? I matched eight and nine, what are you talking about? Yeah. But then as I started to look forward and really get my eye trained, you know, the emails went from this long to this long to this long. And then he was like, bro, you don't have to send anything anymore. You know what you're doing, right? So that's the focus on that. This, we're training Devin and Julie to eventually go for accreditation because we feel that the, the, the process is invaluable. But it's a residency based on everything. I mean, you're basically follow me around my office, Devin does all day, every day, and sees how I interact with staff and patients and the business side and, you know, the hygiene checks and everything. So it's such a, a broad, broad spectrum with a slight focus, you know, a good focus on cosmetics because that's what she wants to do. But we don't just do cosmetics. I mean, Amanda, you know, you laugh at me when I send you endos and I say puff, puff daddy with little puffs at the end of my stuff but we ton of endos implant i mean everything that we do in practice she gets to see so there's so much more to it it's not just a you know straight line access to becoming accredited no and i think that's important because i think some people think oh well anybody that's a resident of the acd program is going to get accredited mm -hmm. well not because we've done anything to do the dentistry for them. I mean, they have access to us all the time. Yes, they get access for the learning value. It, it's, it accelerates their learning 100%. There is no question. Yeah. They still have to do the dentistry. They still have to find the patients, do the case. So, you know, the rules still apply for these residents who want to go through accreditation the same way they do for everybody. But I can tell you, when I went through accreditation, I mean, I was alone on an island in Charleston. I flew to Atlanta, Georgia with Jim Merriman, um, Marilyn Calvo, some other people to go to their um, cosmetic dentistry study club, accreditation study club, because nobody around me was doing it. Just so I could surround myself with people that were looking at dentistry the same way. It took me five years to get accredited. And yes, I had babies and stuff in between, but it was because, you know, I own my own business. So there was the challenge of, you know, running that day to day and, and from a business sense being financially, um, you know, thriving, right? And then finding the time to do it. And then when I did carve out the time on a weekend by myself and the kids are home, and I wanted to ask a question, I needed somebody to help me and nobody's around to help me. So I'd have to take a photo. I have to email it to my mentor, wait for my mentor to reply. So it it takes much longer and it's harder than, yes, if in the residency program, but we all have to do the same work. You know, there's no cheating, there's no anything. It just accelerates your learning value. And I'm going to add to that being that I, I am the accreditation chairman and I take a lot of pride in who my examiners are and, and they're all amazing. Um, but we take a lot of pride in the process and how psychometrically validated it is. So just because Devin's a resident doesn't mean that she's going to become accredited very easily through me. As a matter of fact, when she does decide to start accreditation cases, I will not be the one who mentors her because I will not walk in a room. My partner is going through accreditation right now. I will not mentor her because I don't want to give her an unfair advantage. So she's mentored by my mentor, Brad Olson. I don't look at her cases. 
and I could, I could walk in the room and help her. We take pride and we understand how hard it was to go through, but how valuable it was. And it's just the journey. It's not the damn metal I got on that stage that's hanging in the hallway, which is fine. I probably have an extra in the drawer for all I know. But it's what I got out of that. That's amazing. What it built, what it, how it trained my eye, how it, it just made me so much better. And I'm not going to sell Devin short. And I know you're not going to sell, sell Julie short. And if that's a goal that they want, which I think that they should have, I think everybody should have, yeah. they're going to do it the right way because that's the way the AAC does. AACD is. We don't, there's no, you know, some people think we don't want people to pass. That's the farthest ring from the truth. We want everybody to become accredited, but we're not going to lower our standards. We're not going to give anybody favorable treatment just because of who they are. Everybody's going to work hard and do it right. I mean, and I have, you know, I mentor probably 700 people right now, right? And right. maybe 10% of them like are 700 literally? No, no, I'm kidding. But I, I, you know, a good amount of people, and I have people send me stuff, and the, the dentistry is gorgeous. And you post that on Instagram, and it's a wow. But there's a different level and a different eye training for accreditation, and some people get down and give up, and other people are like, okay, I got this, I can do this, and I see it now. And, you know, they, my, their emails to me get shorter and shorter too, but it's such an amazing process. And if, it, but it does take a lot of inner gut because it's humbling. I mean, it is humbling. Uh, some of the stuff, again, that I see is, is everyday dentistry in the top 5%, but accreditation is the top 1%. So if you have the will, do it. Absolutely do it. And we have to take an oath as preceptors too and sign a contract like we, that we are not sitting there leaning over Devin and Julie's shoulder, like while they're doing their accreditation case, like, Oh yeah, yeah. Round that corner off. Yep, perfect. Like, we can't do that. So, it's, um, it's and we wouldn't want that. You know, we <laughs> want it. The whole point is to come out of this so much better. <clears throat> so, I think that's a cool thing with the ACD is the level is so elite that you're gonna push us, and it's gonna be humbling, I'm sure. Um, but I mean, that's that's how we're gonna come out of this, producing at an elite level, is from y'all's honest feedback. So. I know every time I go into Adamo's office with my type it on that there's going to be 15 things that I didn't see. So I always usually come in with like, this is what I see and I don't like. And then we go from there. But I just wait for that day where I show it to him and he just gives me a thumbs up. That's what I want. And I think I don't want to speak for all residents. I know myself, accreditation is obviously a goal, but I also just don't feel like I have enough experience yet and I think that was what really appealed to me too with the residency program is that with the requirements I'm getting so much more experience and a lot of them are accreditation cases or case types as part of our uh, requirements which is nice because if if, it, if it's something I'm proud of that I think will I could submit for accreditation maybe I will but the goal for me right now is just to get more experience doing those types of cases so that way when I'm ready for that that next chapter to start that process, then I will have a lot stronger of a foundation. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the, the, what I've noticed over the eight months with Devin is when she first showed me a class four, she'd say, okay, I don't like this and this, and then I would add 17 things. And now she'll come in and tell me, I don't like these six things, and I only find one or two more. So her eyes are already getting better you know, it, it, who cares what the dentistry level is at right now? And she's obviously doing a great job, but it's what you can physically see. What can we train you to look at something like you would have never looked at anything else before? And I think uh, MIPs, members in process, and when they work with an examiner mentor who legit, I mean, Amanda, you know, I calibrate before every exam session and it's vigorous. Very, I mean, we're calibrated as examiners. I mean, to it's anonymous. We don't know whose case we're looking at. I mean, there's really strict protocols in place. So, um, and we're the only academy I know that has, you know, such a rigorous testing program in place for somebody's medical skills. We definitely talked about this and I'll say it again, uh, documenting everything. I have really come into my own 
trying to document as much as possible. You can ask Adamo when I get an idea in my head, I go full throttle, like, like all the time. Like, like, so, like, yeah, so I started actually, so I took your guys, I took the When the Pictures Really Matter course in Charleston. That was my first Charleston course ever. One, and it, one with um, Jesus and- Yeah. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it was great. But I did the cardinal thing you weren't supposed to do, and I didn't keep shooting when I got back to Virginia, because that was when I was an associate. And I had the camera, and I would have it, and I would take pictures now and then, but it, I wasn't consistent with it. And then when I started the residency program, obviously I'm with Adamo, who is like the king of photography, which has definitely helped quite a bit. But I really wanted to go back to the Impress course um, for the photography course, because I knew I needed like a refresher. So ever since that course in October, November it was, mm -hmm. I committed myself to taking a photo a day. And it not only held me accountable for doing class fours almost every day, but doing everything, just playing with my camera, playing with light, playing with soft boxes, playing with um, the shadow box and everything. Yeah, so she's, I- uh, She's selling herself <laughs> short a little bit right now. And I, this does go back to, individualized preceptors but when if I show you my shared Dropbox folder with her she <laughs> and, and a, a full accreditation series of photos in PowerPoint labeled properly she in the beginning she I made her do it every day that we work so she grabbed an assistant and it's labeled by date and you'll I mean I can't even tell you how many then it, she got so good at them I'm like okay at least once a week and still like I, not a week's gonna go by where she's not gonna pick up the camera She's not going to do that series. She preps teeth under my microscope. If we don't have nothing, get a type it on. Going Humbling. At least once a week. <laughs> yeah. Do a class four, document it every step. And even when she treats patients, like I was doing a, a lecture at Greater New York. I opened my phone. She's like, Doc, you can see a snap the tooth of the gum line. I could put a post in temp. And I'm like, Devin, do it. The whole thing. And I want you to do it e-lab. And I want you to document it. And he sent me a picture of the rubber dam isolation. I was like, well, she took Nexus. Yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I was like, I was lecturing with Justin from Midwest. I'm like, dude. Mentioned to me, Devin, he goes, he goes, look at my savage resident right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, it was like this but crazy isolation. It was he, unbelievable. But I had one photo of the rubber dam. My camera died, the battery died after that. I got that one photo is all it needed. Yeah. yeah but, but Devin has gotten so you know, advanced in, in her skills and her photography skills that we've had. I mean, she's helped us mm -hmm. with our stations at our photography course, showing other dentists, you know, how to, I mean, she, you know, so much more than you give yourself credit for, but you know, it doesn't matter. Like I said, I always talk about the journey, but it's truly, there's never, it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, I look at my work and things that I've done or photos and cases, and there's always things that I can improve on and do better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I got this one tip from Paul Greenon, uh, Uncle Paulie, who helps us. And he oh, does yeah. this with all his implant cases. I never knew this, but he photographs every case that comes back from the lab before insert to evaluate emergencies. So yeah. Evan takes every single lab case that my staff puts on my desk, puts it in the shadow box, photographs it in five different views, evaluates it, tells me what's wrong and if it needs to go back, or we put it downstairs for insert. So, I mean, the amount of photographs and the different types that she's been taking is probably more than most dentists do in their entire career, but by far. Yeah, I have like six external hard drives now. So I usually get there about half hour before uh, the first patient. So that way we can kind of talk about what's going on. So we usually start at nine. So I usually get there by like 8.30 and then Adam and I will kind of go over what we're doing that day. Um, it depends for me seeing patients as to whether or not we have an open chair. So we've had to kind of block out the schedules for that too. So a lot of the time, uh, I will either observe or assist Adamo for his cases, especially if he has big cases. The assistants and I usually, like, the assistant will actually come, Melanie or Mary Ellie will write down the list of patients. And if there's a big case or an interior case, they'll come and tell me so that way I can swap out for them and then I can assist. Uh, if it's my patient, then it's, then one of the assistants will assist me. But 
on average, I don't see necessarily see a patient every day. I will also do a lot of the records for Adamo. So wow. if he has and I will tell you again, like it's kind of going back to that thing. I think with younger docs, they just want to get in there and they want to be doing everything. And I think having a really good foundation is essential. And even things like doing records and doing records properly and, you know, learning how to do a face, a good face bow, mounting models correctly. These are all things in dental school that none of us really wanted to do. And I think people shove that off to assistants or to, to do that for them. Did you learn to do the face bow at Coise or through Adamo? Both, because he will do some conventional face bows. So I learned more of the conventional stuff from him. But then when I went to the... You uh, do your bow? I, 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 I've been using the Dinar since the Dawson. Dinar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, you know, I, 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 it depends on the minute what I want to grab or what's yeah. being used. Mm -hmm. And I've had obviously pretty good success with the dinar over the years. I think it's just a matter of how you use it right as well, right? But so she gets exposure to both, and you know, there's there's no right or wrong, obviously. But um, yeah, so go on, Deb. Oh yeah, no. So I think taking records is huge. Whenever Damo has any or the office, if we have an Invisalign case, I do all the photos for that, and I will tell you that that is the best way to practice photography is yeah. to not give that to somebody else to do is to do it yourself because what i do since i do the accreditation series i take the additional it's all the same photos except for three you have to take three additional photos for the accreditation series which is the one-to-one -one, uh, anterior shot so the upper and so the patients don't know the difference i just take the accreditation series plus the ones i need for invisalign and then there you go there's an accreditation series and then same thing with the iTero, and then I'm practicing with the iTero. I can get really good really fast. You should have seen me the first time. I used to actually use the Typodots. Adamo would have me use the Typodots with the Cerec and the iTero just to practice with the machine. And I got decent enough, and then you get an actual patient, you're like, what's happening? Uh, and then you get fast with that too, and then you're starting to get the records out faster and faster, or mounting the models, mounting the cases using the facial glasses and then mounting on the Typodon, figuring out how to analyze whether or not it's actually mounted correctly, using the photos that you took to actually confirm that you mounted them correctly. So it's these little things that I think most people don't want to do, but they're such easy things to do to help improve your own technique and understanding and analysis that I think are so critical and are so nice to be doing. Yeah. No, I mean, you're already doing more than probably 95% of the dentists out there practicing dentistry with records and face mm -hmm. and everything else, so. Yes, yeah, so actually I, so I kind of decided that this two years, it's, it's an investment in your future. That's the, the, the easiest way to describe the residency program. And like you kind of said earlier, it's like 15 years of CE and two. But what I did is I went to uh, the office manager, Nancy, who is awesome. I told her, cause she does a lot of the more business side of everything. And I told her, I'm like, you know, one of these days where Adamo's out on a Wednesday or something and he's traveling, maybe I can come in cause I'm usually there just in case there's emergencies if I'm not with him and I can sit with you and you can kind of show me how you run a practice because I don't know about anybody else, but I think I had a one credit course in dental school for an hour, one semester, one day, one time a week. Like didn't, I didn't learn anything. So like I sit, I sit with her and kind of go through how they put in the procedure codes, how they move, like when they take a credit card payment and then move it into the account and all this other stuff. And it's, it's so interesting because I have no idea what any of that is. And then I will go up and talk to the assistants and they have like the most beautifully organized supply room. And I kind of talk to them about, okay, well, how do you organize this? Or how would you put this together? And then they have little bins for each type of case, whether you're doing an endo, there's an endo bin. If there's a restorative, restorative bin. And it's just kind of nice to kind of get an understanding from the different sides of the practice, which you don't always get if you're working. So it's kind of like a nice bonus. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I think um, an added value to it that 
people don't realize is a lot of the preceptors, because there's not many at this point, but they're already in leadership in the academy. They're educators. They have a huge network of mm -hmm. friends who are also doing the same thing. And so the people that Devin has met and come in contact with and be able to, you know, pick their brain or have access to them, that's, you can't put, you know, a value on of what that can do for your career as well. Another question. My proudest one, I'm sure it's yours, Adamos, we've had five people that took our synthesis course pass their case type five, which is the hardest case type to pass, you know, so and of the five, I think three of them got accredited or Cappy, uh, Claire, Rita, and Sarah Sloan. And then Erin De Palma passed her case type five, Camille passed her case type five. So that to me is like so exciting and rewarding. And then those people have met each other. Those people stay in touch. Those people are rooting for one, one another, you know, and saying, what do you have left? What case type do you have left? And what do you think of this? So it just, builds the energy is palpable and you you just grow and you build upon one another you know and i wish i wish i would have had that going through this because i i literally felt like i was on an island you know that i had no one so yeah. you know like one of my favorite quotes I, I i put it in one lecture i probably said it on here before but my grandma used to say to me in italian and i'll never forget it and i think this applies exactly to this is if you hang out with somebody who limps you're going to learn how to limp so you want to surround yourself with people that are at your level, above your level, that can help you grow and improve. And I think that's what this little family uh, that we built, I think that's what the AACD accreditation crew is so tight. The fellowship crew is so tight. Uh, the COIS crew, I mean, everything. Uh, and other organizations too, not just what we're a part of. I think that's the beautiful part of it is everybody tries to elevate everybody else, which is awesome. The overall one-on-one -on -one training with a, a high quality dentist uh, which I know all the preceptors are it's it's amazing it's an it's amazing program and yes you will see a ton of, of good cosmetic stuff but you know Devin will attest to we don't do class four composites every day I don't do 20 veneers a day I, you know some of mine are endo some of mine are implants some of mine are full mouth rehabs it's a, it's a good smorgasbord of dentistry in our office and, and you know she gets to understand the business side um the psychology of when i'm aggravated and when i'm not aggravated um so that's a, it's a big thing and it's important to know like what what do you want like what kind of practice do you want i mean maybe you 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 know i don't know there's a lot of people that just want to do the bigger cases all day long and that's fine if that's what you want you know so you if if that's something you're seeking then maybe find a preceptor or somebody that's doing that so that you can learn that yeah. model but i have a general practice i mean i do a lot of cosmetics because even on a general patient if i'm doing one tooth or two teeth i want it to look a certain way i still do everything that i do for a smile design case as i would for you know the person that had a crown break they don't care about cosmetics but i gotta fix that one tooth and honestly those cases to me are, are more rewarding sometimes than the person that comes in and says i'll pay you cash for 30 veneers you know um so knowing it, it what you want but you know adamo does excellent dentistry doing all kinds of things I mean, it's not just cosmetics. I mean, he's good at implants. He's good at surgeries. He's doing, you know, I focus what I do on restorative, but does it mean that I'm doing small design cases all day? No. I mean, I have a, a, a mix of stuff. One of my favorite things to do is to do some Invisalign, bleach and bond. I will do those all day, every day um, and not remove any tooth structure, you know? so. There's not a right or a wrong. It's just deciding what it is that you want to do and find the person that's doing it and learn from them.
you know, I mean, I wanted somebody who had the desire. It wasn't so much that I needed you to be so good right away, but I needed you to have that desire to want to be good, to care and about what you're doing as much as I care about what I'm doing. And it was really hard when, you know, people are looking at the job from the perspective of how much production they can have in order to sustain this income. So that's, and it's a big barrier, right? Because you can work for corporate dentistry and get paid a six figure salary. And you can be busy all day long, but that's a totally different experience. So what I had on the table, I had like multiple coming out of this residency, AEGD residency, I'm sure Devin, same thing. I had these job offers and kind of been making good money, but you have to weigh out, like, especially early on in your career, you know, what I'm learning next year with you and what I can do with that. I have a whole career ahead of me. So I think it's important to take a step back and try to look at the big picture, so. I will tell you hands down, I took a third pay cut for from what I was doing in my associateship to yeah. residency. And she's working three times as hard. But I didn't think twice about it. In fact, I didn't even know what I was making until I got to Adamo's office. We never even talked to it because to me, it wasn't about the money. And I think that is something else kind of talking about, like you, people ask like, how do you find a mentor? But the reality is you have to make yourself somebody that someone will want to mentor. Like it's not something where somebody else is going to make you into them or make you into the person you want to be or the practitioner you want to be. You have to make yourself a desirable candidate for somebody to want to mentor. You have to show that you have that passion, that drive, that energy to want to do better and kind of prove that, you know, you're worth mentoring. Really it's well. a two way street. Yeah. I mean, listen, let's call a spade a spade. Do I really need any more on my plate than I have on in my life right now? Probably not. Right. So, but Devin is the kind of resident that I think of things for her to do. I, I, I want to teach her everything I, I know. I want to go the extra mile for her. You know, we're doing the mastership program with the Almonds. Do I really want to read 17 articles a week? No, I did it because of her and I'm glad I'm doing it with her, but she pushes me as much as I push her and makes me want to elevate even in the operatory. You know, you got somebody that you're mentoring and you want to show them this is how it should be done you're not cutting corners. I, mean, I don't cut corners. I mean, I never did anyway, but there's no, uh, I'm not putting a rubber dam on this one because I don't feel like it. No, no, no. My residence in the room, I'm going to lead by example and everything gets done 150%, which is, should be the thought process all the time. But we've all had our days and moments where we're like, oh my God, I just don't feel like it. Right. Yeah. But that's not an option when she's in the room, because <laughs> if I give her bad habits, she's going to take them. And, and as a good educator, I can't do that. And I won't do that. The reason that I decided to be a preceptor is, yes, I love to teach, but I, Adama and I teach plenty. It's not like I said, it's not enough teaching. I want to teach every day in my practice too. Yeah. Um, the main reason is because, and everybody's, like I said, it's personal, everybody's different, but I've always known that I wanted to grow my, my practice into something more. And I always knew that I wanted to build the super team like a super team of people that are passionate about the dentistry. They, they, they want to work as hard as I do. They want to put the blood, sweat and tears into it um, and build this with me. You know, and what that looks like in the next few years, I don't know, but, but they're going to be okay with not knowing and growing with me, right? And evolving. And it was really difficult to find that person because every person that came in, it was less about the journey and more about the money. And so that's why the residency program appealed to me. And I don't wanna make this about, oh, you're not getting paid anything. You're, you're paid a resident salary, okay? I mean, everybody knows what that is and you can, you can um, negotiate that with your contract depending on where you live, whatever it is. But I know that whoever signs up to do a residency in my practice for two years, that they want to grow, they want to learn. And who's the best person to hire 
to be a part of my super team at the end of two years than the person that I've invested in, spent all my time and energy in to be a part of what I'm doing. Versus somebody right off the street, you know, that shows me a nice resume, but I don't know anything about them. I don't know, you know, I'm still gonna, even if they're stellar at cosmetics, I have a way of doing things, right? And I want it to be that way. So that's what really appealed to me about being a preceptor for my unique situation is I just, it, it, it took all the noise away from, you know, why somebody would want to work for me. Um, so I know that Julie coming on board, you know, that is that she wants to, to learn. She's trying to better herself. And at the end of two years, I'm hoping that she'll be a part of, of what we're doing here in Charleston, which is going to be amazing. I mean, I think it, it goes to your values. What are, you, what are your values? Because success obviously is so different for different people. And you can't, you, you're the only one that knows if you're successful or not. Because you could be doing an awesome dentistry, but who knows what's going on outside. So to me, it's just, I don't know, the pursuit, per, pursuit of your values. Yeah. And I would, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's I would build off of that. I would say success is a good night's sleep. But I I feel <laughs> like if, I, if I'm doing something that I can feel good about, then I get a good night's sleep. There, are, like, I feel like in residency, like GPR and um, when you're an associate, like, you don't always feel good about everything that you're doing. Like, I know at the practice I worked at, we put crowns on everything. And now I wouldn't cut a crown if you you know, if you were told me I was gonna get fired if I didn't cut a crown. Cause you know, it's just feeling good and you know, being able to go to bed every night and feel good about the work that you did and sleep well. Like I feel like that is to me, like I can't give you a definite definition of success, but if I can sleep well at night knowing that I did what I know was right, then that's what I would say success. Yeah. How about, what about you? you, Amanda? <laughs> well, I mean, you know who I'm married to, right? <laughs> Hustle forever. I don't know if you're on here, but <laughs> he was. He come. He laughed before I saw my him. husband. Um, my husband's. A, I mean, I'm sure everybody thinks their spouse his spouse is special. I mean, he's he's really special in a lot of ways. But um, anyways, his whole motto is faith, family, fitness these four areas for success, right? And, you know, because we all know, listen, as far as business sense, I know friends that are, <laughs> they make more money than you can even believe when it comes to dentistry. They have financial success, but they don't have family success, right? So what does that mean? You know, not a good family night life, not, spouse problems kids whatever it is and then there's people that are you know we talk about fitness and fitness is like your health just taking that for granted i mean there's people that are on the road they're traveling adamo sometimes maybe not putting your health first you know and that's part of who you are you know adamo i mean we're you 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 can't keep treating your body like that right for the next 20 years right so that's that's part of it and then faith I mean and, and not to you know talk about religion we all believe different things but I think that you have to believe in something that you um, guide your life by and, and, a, and a higher power so David's whole thing was faith family fitness and business and and when you can find that balance and not balance let me rephrase that it's not balance but your goals within those four areas then that's success Right, because I'm definitely not balanced. I mean, there are times when this is happening way more than that, but I have my goals of what I'm trying to do in each of those categories. Um, so, so Dave, if you're watching, nice I've been watching his videos too. I told him, and it's nice to have those four things. At the end of the day, you think about them. You know, you had an off day, and you're like, one of those things was off for sure, if not all of them, but. Um, and then you can, gives you some structure to, yeah, define success, so. Yeah, 
Because it is. I mean, sometimes we're so focused on the one area in our, our life because of just where we are. I mean, right now, Devin, you know, you're you're single, you have a boyfriend, but you've got this time to really focus in on you, like the success of you, your skills and all of that stuff. And that's going to transition to when you move away and you're probably going to get married, right? And another thing, so, so success is... Um, a lot of different things and you know we all got to find what that means for all of us i agree with you and i think you do have an amazing partner because david is phenomenal like just a phenomenal human being on every level i want to see him uh, grow up for sure. uh, but it's funny because i've talked to a lot of female dental students who've talked about it and i know you talk about it a lot about how having him as like a true partner is like the main way you've been able to, you know, succeed as you have. And I think that's really important because I know that there are other female doctors who are younger who want it all. They want to be able to have the family. They want to have the business. They want to have everything. But I think the thing that's so important that you guys talk about is the partnership and how important that is. And I'm lucky where my boyfriend was super supportive of me considering we were long distance for two years. I moved to Virginia with him for a year and then was like, bye, <laughs> I'm leaving again. <laughs> but it was, it's kind of that thing. If you have a true partner who understands why you need to be doing something or, you know, when these types of opportunities come to have that unconditional support behind you. And it's not just female doctors too, obviously, but it, it's so important to have somebody there with you that's gonna support you and help, you know, raise you up when you need to. So you guys are young, you're starting off, you're doing all these cool things. So just keep it, just, just keep that in the back of your mind, you know, because I see all these, not a lot, there's some, but these young dentists that come out and they just want to be like badasses and, you know, the famous dentist, the famous this, like, who cares? That's not success. Success is way more than just that. Yeah, I think, Amanda, to, I guess I'll round off the table with a question. Um, I, I think a lot of people's vision and definition of success is so skewed and so wrong. And I think that's what leads them down the wrong path. Um, because, you know, nothing I know that you've done and accomplished, which is everything and and i've done and i've been pretty good so far um i didn't do accreditation to get a medal or a title i didn't do fellowship for that either i didn't graduate from the koi center because i need to wear a t-shirt although i am super proud of the accomplishment right and I, I he'd probably give me one um and i don't consider success fifteen thousand instagram followers or you know anything like that i think for me, success is simple. I love what I do every single day. And not every day is awesome. And not every day is perfect. Uh, a lot of days stink. But I still have the fire every morning I get up to just want to go and do dentistry and, and better myself to better my patients and deliver the best quality stuff that I can. Um, and, you know, getting awards and, and, and lecturing in big places is so amazing and it's a huge honor. But, you know, the things that really make me feel like, wow, I, I've done something pretty good is, I'll use an example and I won't mention his name, but I got a, a message from a prosthodontist um, yesterday who watched my um, Dental Outliers interview with Stephanie Zella. And he wrote me, uh, it was a long, long thing, and basically just praised me and my character and what I'm about and my motivation and said that the world needs more people like you. And I was like, and then he apologized for like blowing up my inbox. I'm like, bro, anytime I get a message like this, that is success. It's not how much I produced last month or last year, not how many veneers I did, not how many likes I got on my Instagram posts. It's not how many places I lecture at. It's, wow, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more proud of motivating Devin to become the dentist I know she wants to become than I am about anything else. Because 
that's what this is all about, right? And if we wake up one morning and I said this to Stephanie, the day I wake up and I hate this, I'm quitting. I will shut down so fast and no one will ever see me in that tree again. And I'll go find something else that I love I want to do. I mean, I loved being a garbage man when I was one. I, I did. I mean, I was probably the happiest garbage man on the planet. Um, but we have to really search in our soul and, and do everything with passion every single day. And I thoroughly believe that. And Devin's seen it for nine months now. Not a day goes by that I don't give a thousand percent. And again, I'm not perfect. Everything I put in somebody's mouth doesn't come out perfect. But you damn well bet that if I see something I did that's not person, I'm redoing it till it is. Um, and, you know, for all of you out there that think that success is how many Instagram likes and in your post, that it's so the farthest thing from a truth. You got to just be happy with who you are inside and what you're doing career wise, personally, and so on and so forth. And uh, I, haven't, I, I haven't done a post since this whole COVID thing. Like I haven't even thought about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing stories, but I haven't even thought about it. I've just been more worried about doing these little zooms to connect with people and to talk, you know, and it, it does, it takes you away sometimes to step away and be like, so what you haven't posted in two months. <laughs> Like, you know, but I couldn't believe it. I, I don't know if it's been two months. Whenever we went to Koi Center, that was the last time I posted. Yeah, I almost felt bad for the while. I went like an archive More than two picture months. of Melanie from like two years ago we took and re-edited it and then posted it because I was like, oh, I'm not doing anything. But yeah, that's great. I love it. I mean, I love the, the people I met meet on Instagram and the camaraderie and the, I mean, the work is amazing and it's beautiful, but that's not success. It's yeah. not at all success. Success is, comes from within, and, and it's not a title. It's not a name. And you, know, you you were saying before about your hygienist calling you Dr. C. I never say doctor anything. I always stick my hand out. Well, now I can't shake hands, so I elbow bump. Uh, and I say Adamo, and that's it. And I'm no better than any human being because I have two letters in front of my name, and I thoroughly believe that. I mean, I have friends who came from the rough and rugged, and that's what they do all day. And, and and then I have friends who have the title doctor and I don't respect one more than the other because I know it's the struggle and I know what they did to get there. And it doesn't matter what you do, it's how you do it, in my opinion. And if you have any questions, you can reach out, I'm sure, to Devin or Julie on Instagram too with any personal questions or Adamo and I would be happy to answer them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right, gang. We're excited. Right, Julie, we are going to rock and roll. Love it. Yay. <laughs>